Hey all, JTC here, and welcome back to another tier list video. Uh, today we're going to be going over Salt Spire's weapons in a tier list, and before anyone says anything or types it down in the comments, I know I am missing Salt Spire's ranged weapons right now, but that's because this tier list doesn't offer it, so I will first be going over his melee weapons, and then I will be doing his ranged weapons last, uh, because I'll have to manually edit them in. I'm not going to forget any weapon this time, I promise. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into it, starting with Rapier. Um, I don't even think I need to talk too much about this weapon. It goes straight up to S tier. It's one of the most powerful weapons in this game. I would say it is the most powerful weapon in this game alongside Sword and Dagger because it has absolutely everything. Attack speed, block reduction, uh, good dodge. It has uh, fast attacks. It has good um, attack angles, extra headshot damage. It, it does absolutely everything, and it... Uh, it's just a beast of a weapon, and it might need a little bit of a nerf. But yep, uh, moving on from that, because there's not really too much else to say other than it's really, really good, is uh, dual hammers. Now, these are the equivalent of Barden's dual hammers. Um, however, I wouldn't say they're necessarily as good as Barden's dual hammers because of one other weapon that exists that you can take in place of this. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply because you can't take this specific weapon that we're going to talk about later on Zealot. So, um, two-handed hammer or dual hammers is really, really good on Zealot, and there really is no weapon like it, which is why I'm going to put these weapons in S A tier. Not quite S because on Warrior Priest there is a better option, but still really good and pretty much the best option you can get for Zealot. Now, next up is going to be Billhook. Uh, Billhook is one of those weapons that I'm not really a fan of personally, but I can I cannot deny it's still an incredibly good weapon. Uh, it has um, good dodge for... It, it used to have infinite dodge. This weapon used to be like S tier, because it used to have infinite dodges, and it also had, you know, the special attack, which is really good. It had the... Um, it had extra headshot damage. It had um, really good single target damage. But um, it's been nerfed since then. The extra attack is no longer spammable since it costs um, stamina shields, and uh, they nerfed the dodge count from an infinite dodge count to, I think it's like six or four. So it's not as good as it used to be, but it is still really, really good. And... The, the only reason why I wouldn't place it really, really high still in S tier, other than the nerfs that it's gotten, is because, in my opinion, the attack, um, the attack pattern of the weapon and the attack arc is a little awkward and sometimes makes it difficult to hit headshots on. But otherwise, it is still an incredibly good weapon, which is why I would put it in S A tier. If you can get past the awkwardness of the attack angles, it's, it's a very good weapon and it'll be a really solid choice for you. Uh, next up is One-Handed Axe. I, I don't know why this weapon exists. This is really a really bad weapon. I, I don't think there's technically a difference between Salt Spire's one-handed axe and Barden's one-handed axe, but I swear to God, Barden's one-handed axe is just better than Salt Spire's. I don't, I don't know what it is about it, but it just feels like it attacks faster and like has more stagger and does more damage. I don't know what it is about it, but... For some reason, Salt Spire's one-handed axe just feels so, so, so bad compared to Barden's one-handed axe, which is why I'm putting it right in C tier. You can take literally any other weapon that Salt Spire has at his disposal and do better with it than you could do with one-handed axe. There is no reason for you to ever use this weapon on Salt Spire. Uh, speaking of one-handed weapons, though, we're moving on to one-handed hammer. One-handed hammer is the equivalent of Barden's one-handed hammer and uh, Kruber's one-handed uh, mace weapon. However, I wouldn't necessarily put it as high as these, uh, uh, as the other two weapons, aforementioned weapons that I mentioned on the other two careers or characters, because once more, there are better options that you can take with um, Warrior Priest. Or sorry, there are better options that you can take on Salt Spire just in general. Um, I, I don't want to spoil it and get into it, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, for right now, I'm just going to leave One-Handed Hammer in AB tier because it is still a very solid weapon, still very good, but there are just really are better options that you can take. Uh, speaking of one of these better options is the Reckoner, the Great Hammer. This weapon originally I thought was going to be actually quite bad, but the more I played with it, the more I realized how good it was and how much value you can actually get from this weapon. It has incredibly high single target damage, it has really good um, horde clear potential, it has really good stagger, and it's not, in my opinion, as boring as just normal two-handed hammer, because normal two-handed hammer is just spam heavy attacks for constant horizontal sweeps, 
Well, this weapon actually requires you to learn an attack pattern and learn a combo, which to me makes the weapon that much more fun, because it's not mindless, you actually have to think about it. And um, especially when you combine it with Warrior Priest, this weapon shreds through Chaos Warriors because of that extra 30% damage that you get from, uh, again, Super Armor. So you can stack, um, you know, crit chance and more power versus armor in Chaos, and you're doing like an additional uh, 50 to 60% damage against Chaos Warriors, and you can just absolutely shred through them. Now, I would not call this weapon S tier because of its low um, defensive capabilities and its low dodge count, which is why I would put this weapon in SA tier. If this weapon had like inherent block cost reduction or if it had more stamina shields, I would say this weapon would be an easy S, but because it does have some kind of weakness in that aspect, I would put it in SA. Uh, next up is a weapon that I think a lot of people misunderstand or don't really, uh, or people sleep on, which is Saltspire's one-handed flail. A lot of people um, judge the one-handed flail based on Zealot, which... It's not bad on Zealot, but I actually think it gets a lot more value on Witch Hunter Captain. Why? Um, for a couple of reasons. One, the crits help out with the damage a lot. It also helps with the cleave. Uh, but mainly, two, you get Heretic Sighted on Witch Hunter Captain, which is the um, whenever you attack an enemy, you get 10% uh, extra attack speed for 10 seconds, which really helps offset the one main downside this weapon has, which is its slow attack speed. And then... Um, there's one more talent, uh, Flens. Being able to get bleed on this weapon also makes it really, really good because it has such a high cleave. You can basically just spam um, heavy attacks and cleave through an entire horde, armor included, and just apply bleed dots onto every single person, which really, really helps with the damage. Um, I've gotten top damage a lot using this weapon on Witch Hunter Captain, and if especially if you know how to time the heavy attacks, you can get constant heavy attacks out, which just like absolutely shuts down hordes. Because of that, I would put this weapon up in A tier. It's not quite as good as these other weapons up here, definitely not as good as Rapier, but um, it is still a very, very good weapon nonetheless, especially on Witch Hunter Captain. Uh, next up is going to be Falchion. Uh, Falchion is really, I, I think Falchion's a really fun weapon to use. It does have kind of its struggles. It doesn't really have that much cleave, and it doesn't have that much stagger, but it is still a, a pretty high damaging weapon that if you're able to kind of get around its lack of stagger and its lack of cleave, you're actually, you can actually make, um, get a lot of use out of the weapon, which is why I would put it also alongside, a uh, Flail in A tier. Um, like I said, it does have some weaknesses in the sense that uh, of those things, but yeah, I, I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's fine. Uh, next up is Axe and Falchion. <sighs> this weapon, I really don't know where to put it. I will be honest. Uh, Axe and Falchion, back when it released, back in the Back to Uber's Reich update, it was absolutely, it was like above Rapier. It was better than Rapier. It was like S++ tier. Uh, because of, it's just, it, it had everything. It was like Rapier now. It had absolutely everything that you could ever need. It was pretty much the Sword and Dagger of Saltspire. But ever since, um, Winds of Magic dropped, uh, it's gotten a couple of nerfs, and, um, because of the stagger system, it's also gotten changed quite a bit. So it's not as good as it used to be. It's not necessarily a bad weapon, but it definitely had a fall from grace. Um, what I call it, would I still call it, like, SSA? No, I would not call it SSA tier. Would I call it CBCB tier? No, I wouldn't. Um, which is why I'm going to also put it in A. I know it's um, a little controversial not, not to put it higher, but unless you're playing on, like, Zealot, which is where I think uh, the weapon shines the best, you're not really going to get that much use out of the weapon anymore. Zealot is able to make really good use of the weapon because of that constant um, attack speed from his dash, uh, but... Yeah, otherwise, like on Witch Hunter or Bounty Hunter, you're not going to get that much uh, use out of it. Uh, next up is Flail and Shield. Boop! I am very much blown away with how absolutely fantastic this weapon is. Um, it definitely rivals uh, Rapier for the slot of, like, best Salt Spire weapon. It has absolutely everything you need. And it's also a shielded weapon, which means it has really good block, uh, really good defensive capabilities, really good blocking, as well as it can also block rattling gun uh, fire. Um, I was actually really surprised with how high the headshot damage on this weapon is. Um, if, if, if you don't believe me, uh, go like try to solo a uh, 
storm vermin patrol with this thing and just get headshots and you will absolutely kill storm vermin in like two or three heavy headshots which is like unheard of um this is a really good weapon it has absolutely everything you need just like rapier which is why i think it's uh also s tier along with rapier um what i call it better than rapier debatable depending on who you're asking i think it's right in line with rapier i don't think it's necessarily better or worse but i do think it's like right up there with it uh next up is the great ha oh, great hammer uh great sword two-handed sword once more completely equivalent to a uh, kruber's two-handed sword eh, i i don't know it's not bad but it's also not great so just b tier like there's not really too much to say about this weapon other than it's just like good at being mediocre that's really the best i can say it um there are many many other options that you can take as you can see that would be that would do you better than this weapon but there are also worse options that you can take so yeah it, it's just it's just two-handed sword uh next up is this weapon uh hammer and shield which is the equivalent of a bardens hammer and shield um i originally admitted that I did sleep on this weapon originally. I thought it was not that great, but the more I used it, the more I realized it's actually not that bad. Um, however, I'm not going to put it that high up. I'm going to leave it in the AB tier simply because Flail and Shield exists. And Flail and Shield does absolutely everything Hammer and Shield can do, but better. So yeah, it does kind of suck that this weapon is completely overshadowed by Flail and Shield, but that's just the way it is, frankly. Um, there's no reason to take Hammer and Shield when Flail and Shield exists, because Flail and Shield is just so much better. And then lastly, we have Tome and Hammer. Hammer, hammer and Book? Hammer and Tome? Um, this is another weapon that I don't really know what to do with, because on paper this weapon seems really, really good, uh, but in practice it's just not really that good um a lot of the, the problem that i have with this weapon is that the dash is seemingly good on paper but it's a little too short to actually like make a difference a lot of the time and the um overhead bonk which is supposed to be kind of like a flaming flail one um takes too long to charge whereas um if you wanted to get like good horde clear you should just take out your reckoner your your great hammer or take out your um flail and shield and you'll clear the horde a lot faster than you would if you were to be using this repeatedly um even if you do the whole um you know pre-charge the book then push attack to go into the overhead and then heavy bonk if you keep doing that it's going to take you a lot longer to horde clear than if you were just to switch to another horde clear weapon and do it like that so like this weapon seems to me like a fun gimmick like it's fun but that's just what it is. It's a it's a gimmick. So, which is why I would personally put it in B tier. I think the easiest way to make this weapon better and shoot it up from B tier to like A tier or even S A tier would be to do two things. One, switch the attacks so that the heavy one attack was the overhead bonk and the heavy two was the charge forward. And then make the charge forward a little bit longer. Um because right now I just think it's too short to actually make a difference most of the time. Or what you could do is you could also, you don't you don't necessarily have to make the charge longer, but like increase the reach of the actual weapon attack. Because a lot of the times what you'll do is you'll try to charge to something like, you know, warp fire thrower or rattling gun to stop them from shooting. And you're just shy of them and then they end up blasting you. And yeah, that's just it. And then last but not least, we're going to be going over all of Saltspire's ranged weapons, starting with the Brace of Pistols. The Brace of Pistols is uh, what I would call a perfect example of a jack-of-all-trades weapon. Um, it doesn't really excel at any one thing, but it isn't also really bad at any one thing. It does every single job equally well, and it's really, really good for um, versatility. Now, it does lack in, like, super long-range long sniping, but other than that, it's a really solid weapon, which is why I would put it in an easy A tier. Um... If you don't really know what ranged weapon to run, run Brace of Pistols. Next up, we'll be talking about uh, Salt Spire's Crossbow. Now, Crossbow is kind of the opposite of Brace of Pistols in the sense that it's supposed to really only do one thing well, which is supposed to be ranged sniping and single target damage. But with just how the weapon works, it's actually really good at everything. Um, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, it's really good at sniping and single target damage, but you can also spam it into a horde and get a lot of damage and a lot of cleave out of it. 
Um, I remember this weapon used to be so good at that that Fat Shark actually nerfed the cleaving aspect of this weapon. But even after the, the, the nerf, it's still really, really good for, you know, horde clearing if you don't want to get up close and personal with the horde for whatever reason. And um, if you pair it with Bounty Hunter, it does even more damage. Plus, you can get, you know, guaranteed crits and get your um, ammo back with Scrounger. Or if you don't want to risk that, you can just run a conservative shooter and just get a bunch of headshots and just get your ammo back for free. Which is why I would put this, honestly, in S tier. Um, I think it's by far his best weapon, and you will never go wrong if you pick it. Next up is going to be uh, what I like to call the bread box. Um, it's basically volley crossbow, but everyone likes to call it the bread box because it looks like a bread box if you really take a look at it. Um, but this weapon, um, it's a weapon. It's definitely a weapon. Is it good? Eh, it depends on who you ask. Um, it is not good at ranged sniping, but it is kind of like good at um, close ranged like shotgun panic shooting. But the problem is it has um, trouble keeping ammo because you chew through ammo really fast. And I mean, like, even if you were to run it with like um, Scrounger and you were to put it on Witch Hunter Captain and, you know, crit and then try to like shoot it to get all those um, ammo refunds. It still just, in theory, doesn't really work. Because I think um, Scrounger only procs on one bolt. Because technically, whenever if, if you're doing the right-click um, shotgun shoot, technically all three bolts will crit. But I'm pretty sure that only you'll only get the ammo refund for one bolt and not all three. So, yeah, there's really no reason to use this weapon. It's fun, but there's no reason to use it, which is why I would personally put it in, like... I don't know, I guess B tier? No, I'll, I'll put it in A, B tier. I would put it in A, B tier. It's not that bad, but there are better weapons to run. Uh, second to last is going to be the Repeater Pistol. Now, speaking of weapons that don't really have a point on running, let's talk about the Repeater Pistol. Repeater Pistol is nearly the equivalent of the one-handed axe, in my opinion. Repeater Pistol is not good. Um, it's also a gimmick weapon, but the thing is, it doesn't really have any redeeming qualities. Technically, the only redeeming quality that this weapon has is that you can actually run a build with it on Bounty Hunter to one-shot uh, body shot Chaos Warriors with a crit. Now, I'm not going to lie, I know this is possible on Legend and Below, but I don't know if it's possible on Cataclysm, and I would lean more towards no, it's not, uh, which is why like there really is no reason to run this weapon. Um, every other weapon's gonna give you more bang for your buck. Every single weapon's gonna do really well. Uh, but Repeater Pistol is just kind of a gimmick. Um, yeah, if you want close-ranged, uh, damage, take Brace of Pistols. If you want sniping capabilities, take Crossbow. If you kind of want a little bit of both, you could just take Volley Crossbow, and it won't be much better, but it'll still be better regardless, which is why I would put this weapon in BC tier. Like I said, not quite as bad as One-Handed Axe, but still definitely not good. And then last but not least is the Griffin feat. Uh, basically, brace of pistols, but shotguns. Uh, this weapon is actually, these or these weapons, I should say, are actually pretty damn good, I must say. Also a little surprised with how good they turned out. Um, their rapid fire um, makes for, like, really, really good horde clearing. And um, it kind of fixes the problem that we've seen with other shotguns, uh, such as, you know, Kruber's Blunderbuss. And the fact that, yeah, it's a shotgun, but it only has one shot, and it has a slow reload time and basically a slow fire rate. So it's really, really difficult to get, you know, like, true horde clearing capabilities from it. And Grudge Raker, you know, uh, is a little better in that aspect because it's narrower and has two shots and has, a you know, a pretty fast reload. But Griffin Feet has 12 shots. And it has, like, a really, really wide um, arc, you know, horizontally wide. So you can spam those repeatedly and get, like, really, really good, um, really, really good horde clear. Um, if you put it on Bounty Hunter, it's actually not bad at killing armored units. I like killing um, uh, armored units and just units in general that are immune, or not immune, but more resistant to shotguns, you know, like Hook Rats or um, Storm Vermin. But it is still not, you know, a good... Um, monster killing weapon because it's a shotgun and no shotguns are good at that but yeah i would personally put this weapon in a tier um it's really really good it's not the best but it is still really really good and yeah that is my tier list for all of salt spire's weapons thanks for watching if you enjoyed make sure to like and subscribe for more vermintide content in the future see y'all next time